Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the application of Z transforms for linear constant coefficient difference equation. So basically, we look at Z transform and that is application of Z transform to an LTI system that is an LTI system which is represented by linear constant coefficient difference equation. So we call that an LTI system a discrete LTI system can be represented by an LCCDE that is linear con linear constant coefficient difference equation. So it can be written as y of n a general LCCDE can be written as y of n minus summation k is equal to 1 to n a k y of n minus k plus summation k is equal k is equal to 0 to m b k x of n minus k. So the output y of n is basically a linear combination of the past outputs and the uh, inputs. Now let us call this equation 1. Now let us apply z transform on both sides. That is apply z transform on both sides. So we get y of z equal to minus summation k is equal to 1 to n a k and then z transform of y of n minus k is z minus k that is z power minus k and then y of z. So that is basically we are using the time shifting property here and then similarly for the input part we have the summation k is equal to 0 to m the way it's b case and then z power minus k x of z that is the z transform of the input. So basically we are using the time shifting property here. Now we can easily rearrange this equation so that we can have a uh, terms that have only y of z and the terms that have only x of z. So by gathering all the terms that have y of z, we have y of z multiplied by 1 plus summation k is equal to 1 to n a k z power minus k. So these two terms can be written as single term and then this should be equal to x of z that means we can take this x of z outside the summation so x of z multiplied by the sum k is equal to 0 to m b k z power minus now from system theory recall that the system function h of z is basically the ratio of the z transforms of the output and the input so h of z is equal to y of z over x of z so from this equation we can clearly see that y of z by x of z should be equal to the ratio of the sums that is summation k is equal to 0 to m b k z power minus k should be the numerator and the denominator is 1 plus summation k is equal to 1 to n a k z power minus so that is the h of z that is a rational polynomial therefore an LTI system is represented by a rational polynomial or a rational z transform which is basically a function of z inverse. So an LTI system is, uh, is represented by a rational polynomial in terms of z inverse. Look at the h of z which is basically the ratio of these two polynomials in z inverse. Now uh, consider two special cases of this polynomial that is in case 1 we have an all zero system. That is, for example, if h of z were equal to only the numerator, that is, h of z is equal to summation k equal to 0 to m b k z power minus k, this can be rewritten as 1 by z power m multiplied by k is equal to 0 to m b k z power m minus k. So now this is a polynomial in terms of positive powers of z, and this will have roots which are basically the zeros of the uh, system uh, these zeros of h of z or, or the system and then z power m uh, they will correspond to trivial poles that is this h of z has m trivial poles trivial poles obviously at z equal to 0 and also has m non-trivial it also has m non-trivial zeros that is h of z also has m non-trivial zeros which are basically the roots of this equation or this expression. Therefore, 
h of z which is in the special case where it is only h of z where it is basically the summation k equal to 0 to m b k z power minus k that is it is a polynomial of z inverse and does not have any denominator this is basically all zero system also known as fir that is finite impulse response system finite impulse response system or moving average system moving average basically uh, we are only uh, considering the input and the output y of n is not fed back to the system so it is only uh, uh, basically represents where we only have a linear combinations of the inputs so this can uh, so this kind of system can be termed as all zero system or a finite impulse response system because the inverse z transform of h of z is a finite sequence and also moving average system because it is basically a linear combination of uh, inputs that is it is called fir because h of n that is a inverse z transform h of z of h of z is a finite length sequence or finite number of values and then moving average because uh, we can easily determine the y of n as a linear combination of the inputs that is different inputs so y of n is basically a linear combination of the inputs so it is called moving average and then the second special case that is in the special case number 2 h of z can be written as 1 by 1 plus summation k is equal to 1 to n a k z power minus k which can be rewritten as uh, note that there is a constant in the numerator so now it can be rewritten as b naught z power n divided by summation k is equal to 0 to n summation k equal to 0 to n a k z power n minus k now note that a naught is equal to 1 so in this case this system has n trivial zeros at of course z equal to 0 which we do not really worry about and then we also have n non-trivial poles non-trivial poles that is basically the roots of the denominator so uh, these trivial zeros are not really considered so this system is all pole system and then we can also find h of n that is the inverse z transform of h of z since this has only a denominator and no numerator uh, here b naught by 1 plus summation k equal to 1 to n a k z power minus k it will have a h of n that is the inverse z transform which is of infinite duration therefore it is called iir system that is infinite impulse response infinite impulse response that is it's an iir system and finally the time domain equation y of n can be written as minus summation k is equal to k is equal to 1 to n a k y of n minus k so because the output y of n is only a linear combination of the previous outputs this is called an autoregressive model or autoregressive system so autoregressive system so to summarize we have looked at the linear co linear constant coefficient difference equation uh, representation of a linear time invariant system so it is an lti system is represented by this kind of equation so where the output y of n is a linear combination of the previous outputs and the current and previous inputs so we apply z transform to the system and we found that the system function h of z which is ratio of the output to the input z transforms uh, is basically a rational polynomial in z inverse so that means h of z is basically a rational polynomial and then we also looked at two special cases of this rational polynomial so in the first special case or in the first case we have h of z which is only equal to uh, the basically like a numerator only and then we found that this system has only zeros and no real poles or no important poles or non-trivial poles so it has only non-trivial zeros so this is called either an all zero system or its impulse response that is uh, the inverse transform of this h of z is a finite length sequence so it is also called finite impulse response system and then the time domain equation can be written as y of n is equal to a linear combination of the current and previous inputs so it is basically called a moving average system and uh, the second special case where h of z has only a uh, denominator and the numerator is basically a constant 
so in this case it has only non trivial poles and uh, trivial zeros so it is called an all pole system and it is also called an iir system because the inverse that transform that is h of n uh, is of infinite duration so it's called infinite impulse response system and finally uh, the system uh, equation y of n is uh, consisting of only previous outputs so it is also known as autoregressive system thanks for watching